Good morning, everybody. Testing, testing. It's good to see everyone testing. here. I know it's a little chilly, but it's kind of nice, too. <laughs> so can everyone stand on up as we begin our time of worship together, singing How Great Thou Art. Chance together for this one. Oh Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars I hear the rolling thunder thy power throughout the universe display then sings my soul my Savior God to thee how great thou art how great Sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When through the woods and forest plains I wander and hear the birds sing sweetly. Sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great. Son not sparing, sent him to die. I scarce can take it in that on the cross my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. When Christ shall come. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart? Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my God. a seat and uh, I guess Pastor Jason is going to do our announcements today. Yeah. Thanks Justin. 
What a wonderful song, right? How great he is. Um, just got a few announcements to make, but first one I want to say is um, big mahalo to, to everyone who made our Good Friday and Easter service such a blessing for everyone that came. Um, for all of you who helped out with the decorations of the stage, the putting up of the tent and setting up our hula ministry, special Good Friday video and music. Um, all the food prep and cooking, the video made by the children, and the gospel egg hunt. Um, praise report, the testimony of God's saving grace. Um, all who donated and contributed and prayed. Um, and our worship team, the AV team, and ushers and greeters, thank you so much. It um, was such a blessing, and um, we appreciate every one of you. Um, before I go on and continue with quite a bit of announcements tonight, today, I'm going to call up Hannah. Hannah, if you could come give your announcement. Thank you. All right. Uh, good morning. So my name is Hannah. If you don't know me, I'm one of the naps. And uh, if you do know me, I'm one of the naps. Um, <laughs> uh, family is very integral to me, and MCC is my family. I've had the privilege of being a part of this church for over 25 years. And why am I telling you this? Well, in God's word, we are told um, that the world will know that we are his disciples if we have love for one another. And it also says that we are to be a light to the world, a city on a hill. Um, growing up in this church, I have seen the focus we have on biblical teaching, discipleship, and missions. We sum it up in three words, come, grow, and go. Um, now, I wanted to start w off with greeting you with Merry Christmas. Now, I know we just had Easter last Sunday, but Christmas has been on my mind um, all year, and there's a reason. Um, I think uh, the Lord has put on my heart uh, an opportunity to do all three of those things, come, grow, and go, um, for this upcoming Christmas. And um, I was talking with Pastor Jason, and the desire of my heart is for our church to come together um, in, through unity and worship God um, with creative means, um, to grow as a family in love and service, and to go impact our community with the gospel of Jesus by preparing a special Christmas program. We can be a, little, a light on our little hill here in Mililani. Um, this is a ministry for everyone, and you could call it a puppet show, but it's so much more than that. My mom began this puppet show many years ago, and as a little girl, I got to see her heart for the gospel and for the church when she used to put it on. It's a funny and fun for the whole family um, show, and I think it's brilliant. Uh, we make the sets, the decorations, the puppets, we do the voices, everything ourselves. So when I say as a family, I think um, everyone can contribute, I mean it. I have a list of the skills, materials, and, and the things that we need. And on May 15th, after church, I will be having an info Q&A slash prayer time to seek the Lord in this endeavor. And I would be so encouraged um, if you were there. Um, and this is for all of you. <laughs> and so please prayerfully consider uh, joining us in putting this uh, production together. So May 15th, and yeah, thanks Pastor Jason. Thank you. Awesome. One thing COVID has done for us the last two years is put us apart. So we want to bring us back together with different events and things going on. But we also want to not just be inward focused, but we want to look outward as well. Thanks, Hannah. Um, I just got a few more announcements to make. Um, yeah, as you know, Alan Watanabe's sister passed away a little while ago. Um, but the funeral service is, is now scheduled for June 9th. That's a Thursday, um, 9.30 visitation, 10 o'clock service at Milani Mortuary in the Makai Chapel. Um, and they'll also have a burial at Valley of the Temples at 1 p.m. But the, the Watanabes would need, and this would really help them out because um, as for refreshments. So if you are planning to um, attend the funeral service at the uh, Milani Mortuary, um, there's a sign-up sheet in the back. If you could please put your name down. We need a head count. Um, so it would really help them out. So please do that um, if you plan to attend. We'll have the sign-up sheet there for a few weeks. All right. Um, our Sunday school um, ministries are going to begin next week. Uh, at least we'll have one class indoors and we'll have a Bible study on the outside. So Paul Doman will be teaching a class in here on uh, Proverbs, um, understanding or gaining lessons for life, as well as Pastor Steve will be outside in a more Bible study, interactive um, uh, 
time uh, over talking about Bible stories in the Old and New Testament, and he'll take you through that. Um, so if you would like to, please come at 8.30. Those classes are going to start, and the Bible study will start at 8.30, um, beginning next week, first week in May. Also, Mitchell Chun, one of our members, will be starting a new small group. Um, that will be, the start date will be on May 11th, which is a Wednesday. So, and it's going to be um, focused on an evening of fellowship, uh, um, scripture reading, praise, so singing, and prayer. Um, and that will be on every second Wednesday of each month, from 6.30 to 8 o'clock, right here on our campus. So if you would like to attend that, please um, sign up in the back. That way Mitchell can get in touch with you and, and, and let you know, remind you about the start date, okay? Um, another praise report, um, Chris Masumoto was here for Easter. We were praying that she would be able to attend as she shared what God has been doing and wanted to thank all of you. Um, but we got another praise. She got some results this past week um, and even better than what she was hoping for and we were praying about. So her blasts dropped from 17% down to 3%. So the Videza uh, chemo looks like it's being effective. So um, she'll have an appointment tomorrow uh, with her hematologist and oncologist uh, before she starts her fifth cycle of the Videza. So um, just keep praying for her that the effectiveness of this drug will work um, and help her and give the doctor wisdom for um, going over the results and the plans for further treatment. Also want to thank Gina Gena for making those oven mitts and eyeglass cases for upcoming Mother's Day. Um, just as a preparation in the days ahead in May, May 22nd we'll be having a couple of our frontline missionaries joining us, JD and Kim Crawley. So that's going to be a very special treat. They'll also have something on a Saturday which I'll let you guys know about um, probably next week or so. Um, but they're, while they're here on that Sunday, May 22nd, um, we'd like to take up a special love offering for them. So if the Lord puts on your heart to give above and beyond your normal offerings, um, we'll do that on that Sunday there with us. Okay. Um, also, Children's Church is going to be on today. Um, so usually the last Sunday we have communion, but we had communion on Good Friday. So the children will be um, dismissed for the during the message, and they'll have their children's church back in room A. All righty. That's all I got, but I want to turn your attention. To, I want to read a devotion from Charles Spurgeon. Um, the passage that he refers to is 1 Kings 19.8, and it's entitled, What a Meal. All the strength our gracious God supplies is to be used for his service and not for willfulness or boasting. When the prophet Elijah slept under the broom tree, suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. Then he looked, and there by his head was a cake baked on coals and a jar of water. Elijah was not so refined that he would only take a gourmet lunch. He was commissioned to travel for 40 days and 40 nights to Horeb, the mountain of God. When the master invited the disciples to come and eat breakfast, he said to Peter, Feed my sheep, and then said, Follow me. And so it is with us. We eat the bread of heaven to give us strength in our master's service. We come to the Passover and eat the lamb with a belt on our waist, sandals on our feet, and a staff in our hand, ready to start as soon as we have satisfied our hunger. Some Christians like to live on Christ, but not for Christ. Earth should be a preparation for heaven, and heaven is, a place where, is the place where saints feast and work. They sit at the table of our Lord and serve him day and night in his temple. They eat heavenly food and perform perfect service. Believer, in the strength you gain daily from Christ, work for him. You are not to hold the precious grains of truth like wheat buried with an Egyptian mummy. You need to grow the wheat. Why does the Lord give us both rain and gentle sunshine? It is to help the fruit of the earth yield food. In the same way, Spurgeon says, the Lord feeds and refreshes our souls that we may have renewed strength to promote his glory. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for allowing us the privilege to gather this morning as your people and as we lift high the name of our triune God. We thank you that you are great, great over all the earth. 
And Lord, we thank you and we ask that you would refresh our souls today through the worship songs, through the prayers, through the preaching of your word this morning, Lord. We pray that you would refresh us. Yes, it would be a delight for our souls, but Lord, that it would be used in your service to minister to the body of Christ and to reach those that need Jesus. So Lord, prepare our hearts for all that you have for us, and we commit this day to you and this time to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Pastor Jason. He is risen. He is risen indeed. That, is, that truth is still true today. So we're going to continue singing um, in worship. Uh, if you could stand on up, we're going to sing Because He Lives.
life is worth the living just because he lives and life is worth the living and life is worth the living just because he lives Amen. <laughs> it's a wonderful truth this next one has been close to my heart. Um, I wrote it a while back. Maybe, maybe you remember it, but it's based on the verse Isaiah 41:10, and talks about uh, not fearing, not being anxious, because God is with you. He's our God, and He'll strengthen us, help us, and uphold us with His right, just right hand. It goes like this. look about you for I am your God I will strengthen you surely I will help you surely I will hold you with my righteous right hand I will strengthen you surely I will help you Surely I'll uphold you with my righteous right hand. Sing, do not fear. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not anxiously look about you, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you, surely I'll uphold you with my righteous right hand. I will strengthen you, surely I will help you, surely I'll uphold you with my righteous right hand. look about you for I am your God for I for I am your God for I am your God she brought me with a prayer Father God thank you for being near in our darkest moments I know you are with me when I needed you most. Uh, you calm my fearful and anxious heart, inspired a song through your word. May your word remind us today of who you are and how you care for us. Um, be with Paul as he preaches this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So before Paul preaches, you can go ahead and have a seat. Um, we have a special music. Did you want to say something? Yeah, really quickly. Yeah. As uh, Sarah and Colin get ready. Um, so right after when the music, uh, when the sermon starts, the kids can be dismissed to room A for Children's Church, um, pre uh, K to fifth grade. And then we also have a nursery in room B if you would like as well. Um, and then there will be no men's fellowship breakfast this Saturday. So just to all the men that are planning to come, um, just remember there's no men's fellowship this month, okay? Thanks. Good morning. Um, 
We're going to sing a song called Jerusalem, and um, it's about uh, Christ's journey through Jerusalem, pretty much, um, from the cross to the tomb to the throne. Um, and I know we're about a week late for that whole theme, um, but every week is a good week to celebrate our resurrected Savior, right? So anyway, I hope this song is a blessing to you.
Well, good morning, everyone. If you'll take your Bibles and turn to 1 Kings chapter 19, that'll be our text for this morning. And let's um, begin with a word of prayer and ask for God's blessing upon our time together. Our great God and Heavenly Father, how we just praise you and thank you for this opportunity which you have given to us this day to come together as a church family, to, to worship you, to praise you, to give you all the glory. Thank you so much for your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And thank you, Lord Jesus, for your obedience to the will of your Father to come and die on the cross for our sins, to be buried and rose again. We just thank you for our eternal salvation and the hope that it gives to us. We thank you, Father, for every opportunity which you give to us to learn, to grow, to strengthen our faith, and uh, we just thank you for this opportunity to open up your word and to glean precious truths that will help us to live during these times. Thank you again for your, for your precious word and just bless our time together. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The Lord indeed gives us many, many opportunities to learn and grow. And I just wanted to uh, reiterate the or mention again the classes to start next week pastor steve will be out here teaching uh, uh, bible stories uh, from the old and new testaments and be more interactive i understand and i'll be here in the sanctuary we'll be um, doing a topical uh, study of the book of proverbs and if you were here in 2014 i did a series uh, on proverbs but um, over the years, the last eight years, I've added more material to it. So uh, we'll be uh, looking at various topics through the book of Proverbs and uh, more information. And like I do with my Monday evening, the Bible study, the West Side Bible study, you will have full page outlines. Most of the time, they'll be front and back, two pages, uh, so that you don't have to write furiously. Uh, you can listen. Hopefully, you'll have questions, and uh, there'll be a good discussion, but I'll have those outlines for you uh, every week. If you miss a week, uh, I'll go back and review. Um, so I, I encourage you to come out and take this opportunity, which God has given to all of us, to learn and continue growing. Pastor Steve's class outside and the class on Proverbs um, here in the sanctuary. Uh, just to give you an, an idea of what we'll be covering, uh, the next two weeks we'll be looking at the, uh, some background information to Proverbs, why it's important to study Proverbs, what wisdom literature is, what wisdom in the Word of God really means, and then our first major lesson will be the power of words. As we all know, words can destroy or build up, and so we'll be looking at that subject uh, we'll be looking at wise counsel, how to, how to find it, how to identify it, how to give it. Uh, we're going to talk about wealth, wisdom and wealth, using our, our uh, financial resources. Uh, for those of you who are parents or grandparents, uh, raising our children to be wise is another topic. We'll also discuss conflict, its causes, its effects, and its remedy. Uh, how many of you have any trouble uh, being lazy? No, nobody has any trouble with that, right? We're going to talk about laziness, and that's an enemy to skillful living. And then probably the last lesson will be the wise man and the fool, which one are you? Okay, so I trust that this will encourage you to come out a little earlier than usual, but 8.30. I believe 8.30 was our start time in Sunday school uh, before the pandemic. So just change your mindset and come on out and look for it. Expect a blessing from Pastor Steve's class and uh, from the class here. Well, even though it's been four years since I retired as a behavioral health specialist from the Hawaii Department of Education, I have kept in touch with many teachers and staff of the high school where I was assigned. 
And one of those teachers is a Christian friend who has taught advanced placement psychology for many years now. Brian uh, joined our on-campus prayer group for teachers and staff, which the principal at that time and I started back in 2002, and which I facilitated between 2002 and 2018. So Brian took over leading this prayer group after I retired in 2018. And uh, at last um, note, we had uh, 14 people in our group, teachers and staff, who are praying for one another and praying for the students, especially in the school. For several years prior to my retirement, Brian would schedule me as a guest speaker in his classes. He taught five classes of AP Psychology every semester, and I would speak twice in each class during the course of the semester. And before long, many years ago, I fell in love with this group. And I considered these group, this group of students as the, the most neglected group on campus. After all, they were academically the top juniors and seniors in the school, involved in many activities and organizations, both on and off campus. Many would be heading off to college with tons of scholarships. They had it all together, no problem at all, or so it seemed. Well, it wasn't long before I began counseling with several of these students. And as the years passed, more and more of these students from these uh, AP psychology courses would come in to see me. Some would schedule appointments directly with me, some would go through their school counselor, or some would walk in uh, unexpectedly when they were having a rough time. And so when the pandemic started a little over two years ago, Brian began sharing with me and the others in the prayer group updates as well as prayer requests focused on these students. And over the past two years, this is the progression that I noticed. A few months after the pand pandemic started when virtual learning became a norm, he reported, I have three groups of students, anxious, depressed, and lazy. Beginning at the, of, the, of the current school year, he wrote and said, I have students who are anxious, depressed, and fearful. Two months ago, he said, pray for my students. Some are sprinting to the finish line. Some are limping. Some are going backwards. <clears throat> and then two weeks ago, after he shared that one of his students had been admitted to a mental health facility for treatment, I asked him what he thought were contributing factors to his students in his courses having all of these struggles. And so I received this email, and I'll quote this uh, for you. It says, hi Paul, glad to hear from you. I believe it's been a combination of anxiety and depressive tendencies being exacerbated by COVID uncertainties and family issues due to economic hardships. Spoken just like a psychologist, by the way, <laughs> okay. I've had several students attempt suicide and several more seeking therapy. Much is related to underlying conditions or situations like past abuse, etc. That gets magnified from social isolation, family stress, etc. I think this pandemic has damaged our children more so mentally, psychologically, than medically. Students shut down, give up, and call it quits more easily. Attendance is worse. They miss school for any reason now. And seniors are getting suspended from school during this fourth quarter. It's sad. We need more mental health services on campus and support for counselors. Teachers are enlisted with caring for all students' social and emotional health while maintaining academic rigor. It is stressful for everyone. So, being led by the Lord, and the Lord gives us many opportunities, I wrote back to Brian and said, Hey Brian, I'm going to throw this out to you. How about next year, and beginning next year, I would be willing to come as a, a away from school special speaker and work with your students twice a year or more if necessary. And he said, great, I'm going to have you. So Lord willing, that's going to happen where I can be back on campus working, which I believe, with the, with, with I believe the most neglected group on, on campus. Perhaps some of you here today or viewing online find yourselves like these students, anxious, depressed, 
limping along in the race of faith or even going backwards. Or you're paralyzed with fear and deep sadness and despair, especially as you daily, almost daily, hear, read, or see the horrible news coming out of Ukraine. Or you're worried about the ever-rising inflation, the never-ending COVID variants, or whatever personal issues and problems that you are wrestling with right now. You feel stuck, you've given up, or you feel like quitting. You have no desire to serve God anymore, or you struggle just to get here on Sunday mornings to worship God and to fellowship with God's people. Or you find it very easy at times to stay away from church for any reason now. Well, if you feel like this, then hopefully you will receive encouragement from this morning's message. So I'd like for you to take your Bibles and turn to 1 Kings chapter 19. And I'm going to read our text this morning. There are 18 verses, but I, I believe it's uh, more than worth uh, reading these verses. So you get a feel for what happened to Elijah and how God dealt with him, interacted with him. 1 Kings chapter 19, beginning with verse 1. Now Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So may the gods do to me, and even more, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And he was afraid, and rose, arose and ran for his life, and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came and sat down under a juniper tree, and he requested for himself that he might die, and said, It is enough now, O Lord, take my life, for I am not better than my father's. He lay down and slept under a juniper tree. And behold, there was an angel touching him, and he said to him, Arise, eat. Then he looked, and behold, there was at his head a bread cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came again a second time and touched him and said, Arise, eat, because the journey is too great for you. So he arose and ate and drank, and went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the mountain of God. Then he came there to a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the sons of Israel have forsaken your covenant, tore down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. And I alone am left, and they seek my life to take it away. So he said, Go forth and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord was passing by, and a great and strong wind was rending the mountains and breaking in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of a gentle blowing. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. And behold, a voice came to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? Then he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the sons of Israel have forsaken your covenant, tore down your altars, and killed.